I am getting ready to cast on for a new project and I thought I would try to create a project journal where I go through the entire process of making this uh, new sweater. It is going to be a um, long sleeve version of my plinth tee pattern. This is a new design that's going to be coming out in March. It is a cute little t-shirt, um, but I also have a long sleeve option in the pattern. So I wanted to create a sample to showcase that version as well. I am a little bit nervous. So this is the yarn that I'm going to be using. It is um, uh, Madeline Tosh sock. I've had this yarn in my stash for, I'm not kidding you, like 10 years. Um, I purchased this in 2014. It is 2024. Um, and I have three skeins. Um, yardage wise, I might be a little bit short, which is why I'm nervous. Um, so we're going to hope that I have enough. I weighed the skeins. Um, and it seems like I might be, I might be okay. I might not. I also do have, um, some other yarns that like obviously aren't this yarn, um, but kind of have similar colors that I could potentially just like use in a little like gradient, like alternating with the actual color as I reach the end of the sleeves. Um, I think that would still be nice. And this is a color, um, it is the, um, it is the whiskey barrel color of Madeline Tosh sock. This is a color that still exists. So obviously skeins died 10 plus years ago are, um, guaranteed not to match with skeins that are currently available now. But again, if I was going to be using different yards anyway, doing kind of a gradient at the end of the sleeves, I think would be a perfectly reasonable thing to do. So that's an option too. Um, so yeah, I have all of my yarn, which I just dropped one, but these are my skeins here. I will be starting to wind up the wind up the yarn and get started here shortly. Um, I was going to share a little bit about how the project is constructed since it's a, but kind not that unique. It's a little bit unique. So, um, it has this lovely little fluttery hem here and the hem portion is worked sideways. So the hem is garter stitch and you work it sideways. You work, um, kind of a little bit even and then a little shaping wedge that ends up creating a lot more fullness at the edge. You can see this is a lot longer along the very hem edge compared to where it's at at the body, adding just a nice little gentle flutter to the hem, um, creating just kind of a fun springy silhouette. Um, so it has that sideways hem that you pick up stitches along one edge of the hem, work the rest of it up, um, like bottom up in the round at the underarm, you work a little bit of, a little bit of shaping to have a wider shoulder, um, to, you know, have a nice short sleeve length. And then the sleeve trim is integrated along the edge. So there's no extra like finishing work at the sleeve edge. You work some short rows for the shoulders to have a nice fit. And then you do have a tiny bit of finishing doing an I-cord edge around the neckline. Um, it has a pretty detail at the front and at the back, just a little texture, um, just a little texture detail that kind of mirrors to the detail at the hem. Um, you could totally admit it and just have like a cute plain tee with the fun fluttery hem. And I kind of want to make another one that is plain. Um, I don't have that much knitting time in all honesty. <laughs> um, but maybe in my Sunday goals, I can, I can think about making another one, but for now, um, yeah, I'm just gonna get these skeins wound up and get started on that sideways garter hem. I was getting ready to wind up my skeins when I noticed that this one is quite a bit more saturated than the other two skeins. It has, you know, kind of that brighter orange and blue. The other, the other skeins are a little bit more muted. So I think I'm just gonna start with this skein here, um, wind this one up and 
use it for the hem, for the lower body, and then alternate skeins as I transition into the next one to make sure that I don't end up with any like clear, dark, defined <laughs> lines um, as I transition my skeins. I'm getting ready to cast on here with a figure eight provisional cast on, and this is so I can join the hem later with a three needle bind off. Um, this is a really easy cast on. You're just wrapping your yarn around a top and bottom needle with uh, using a figure eight pattern, and um, it keeps stitches live on both the top and the bottom needle, and um, you can just start working from the top needle as you um, get going on your project and then it leaves the stitches on the bottom needle um, ready to go. I honestly just like leave the stitches on on the needle um, so that I don't have to like put it onto waste yard and then like re-put it back onto the needle when I'm ready to um, use those provisional stitches at the start of the of the project. So I'm just gonna keep going here until I have enough stitches for my size and then we'll get going on the pattern. I've gotten my first couple of rows done here. You can see my lovely little garter ridges starting to take shape and the slip stitch selvage along the edge here. It's important to note that um, the very first row after casting on is a wrong side row to make sure that you have the right number of garter ridges before you begin working your first shaping wedge. And a shaping wedge is just like a little bit of short row shaping. So we're gonna just stop short of the end of the row after um, working a few of our stitches and um, doing that again. And that creates a tiny little wedge that makes it longer on this edge and um, adds a little bit of volume to the hem so that's how you get that kind of fluttery edge and yeah I'll share what that little wedge looks like after finishing this up. I'm about to make my next wrap and turn so I'm gonna show that here so I've reached the point where I need to wrap and turn I'm just going to slip this stitch with a yarn wrapped in front of it slip it back onto the needle turn my work and continue working to the end of the row. And it's really a simple wrap. You're not even picking up the wraps as you um, work the following row. So it's really just a little bit of back and forth. And then after completing the shaping wedge, you'll not be able to see it like as much with just the one completed. but you can kind of see that you have only three garter ridges along this edge. And on this edge, we have one, two, three, four, five garter ridges. So it just creates a little bit of a wedge and then we'll work some even again and then another wedge and continue along in that kind of pattern to create a, um, a, a gentle circular shape for that hem that creates the flutter. And before I keep going, I'm going to show you how to tighten up the cast on edge. You can kind of see that um, with this provisional cast on, we kind of have some longer loosey goosey stitches. So I will literally just put my needle through one stitch at a time and pull out that excess yarn as I go from the edge farthest away from the um, the yarn tail for that provisional cast on and just keep pulling the yarn through so it's you know a neater a neater appearance on the needles and um, once we get to the edge we'll just pull out that excess yarn and we'll have a nice and neat not too loose provisional cast on at the edge And now it looks all nice and neat along both sides of the needle. All right, I am back approximately an hour later and I have gotten a little good bit done here. Um, each of these stitch markers is um, one of the shaping wedges so I can easily just count how many I've done. Also makes it really easy to just count the number of garter ridges in between each one um, instead of like 
keeping track of every single row that I do, I can just place a stitch marker and then count the garter ridges. Um, it's kind of fun working a project sideways like this, um, especially since, you know, you're working over just back and forth or you're working back and forth over a small area. Um, and that means you see progress quickly. So this is, I don't know, like six inches, like four, somewhere between four and six inches of work. Um, and you're really starting to be able to see now, like this edge is a little bit shorter and this bottom edge is a little bit longer. That ability to open up and provide that little bit of ruffle. So um, definitely loving how this is turning out so far. You get like beautiful variegation um, showing up in that garter and it doesn't look like stripey or anything like that. It's just, you know, a lovely tonal blend of the colors. So yeah, excited to see how this is, this is going to shape up and um, we'll see how long it takes me to get uh, the rest of that hem done. I thought I would share how far I had gotten yesterday after one day of work. So I made it all the way to this marker here um, and then a little bit more this morning. So I am a little bit less than halfway done um, with the hem. So this will just be at the bottom edge. And when you pick up stitches, it kind of like doesn't really gather it, but you end up with a little bit of, um, you know, this edge becomes a tiny bit smaller than it is. Um, the hem is looking really nice so far. Definitely excited about that. Tonight, I definitely will pick back up and continue working and probably get past the halfway point. So yeah, that's how it's going so far. I am officially done with my hem. It is very large. This is half and unfolded. It's like a giant garter stitch scarf. Um, this was three days worth of knitting for me. Um, I knit mostly in the evenings um, and this was done on a weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I had a half day on work from my day job on Friday. Um, and then today is Monday, um, but it's holiday. So I'm off of work. Uh, my daughter is napping right now and this is where I'm at. Um, so the next step is to join the ends of the hem here with a three needle, three needle bind off um, and pick up stitches along this edge here. So we're going to be picking up along the top edge here um, to pick up stitches and start working in the round for the body. So I have the hem laid out here, uh, folded. The right side is facing out right now. And before starting to join the hem, I wanted to show you something here. So I'm knitting the size 38. That is a 38 inch body circumference. But you'll notice that the actual like length of the hem that I'm gonna be picking up, in, picking up on is longer than 38 inches. So we're just gonna walk the tape measure along here. And this is folded in half. So um, the 38 inch point would be at 19 inches. So we're a little bit longer than that on this edge. And that's exactly what we want because you can already see we have the fuller edge here along the longer side, but then by kind of compressing this into 30, 38 inches, um, we will end up having even a little bit more fullness, kind of like not actually gathering along the top edge, but you're going to end up easing in this slightly longer edge, giving you even more of that slight flutter fullness without, um, you know, any weird like wrinkles or ruffling. It's just kind of easing in to that slightly smaller space. All right, so I'm going to start prepping to get the hem um, joined, and we are going to fold this with the right sides facing together. So wrong side out. You'll want to hold this with your working yarn towards the right side. So right hand side. So this is here currently on the left hand side. We are going to flip it over. Now the working yarn is on the right hand side here and I'm just going to be working across this row in a three needle bind off um, and then flipping the work 
back right side out and starting to pick up along the edge. So I am set up here to work my three needle bind off. I have my two needles lined up with each other and I'm just going to insert my working needle into the first stitch on each of those needles I have lined up and knit. Then do the same thing with the second stitch and then bind those two stitches that I just knit off and then repeat the process. So knitting another stitch off of each of the needles and then binding it off. And I'm just gonna continue doing that across the row. I have my three needle bind off completed. So the hem is joined. I have the last stitch still on the needles as instructed in the pattern. So the next step is to turn the work back to the right side facing out. And here we go. We have our stitch still on the needles. We have our right side facing out with that lovely slipped stitch border. And we are ready to start working across, picking up stitches um, for the body. I've transferred to my circular needle and I'm ready to get going here. So the important thing here is we want to maintain this slip stitch visual along the edge. There is a two stitch selvage border here with two sets of slip stitches. So we have this one here that we want to remain visible. And then we'll be using this second stitch here as our uh, selvage to pick up stitches with. So we're going to be placing the needle in between these two sets of stitches. So I am going to place my needle in between those stitches and pick up and just continue across. We are picking up one stitch for each slipped stitch as we go across. So it's like a really, really easy pickup. Um, one small note, you'll probably have one to two extra slip stitch spots than the number of stitches you're going to be picking up. So there will be one place essentially where, or one or two places where you're going to need to skip one of your slip stitches and just go to the next one in order to get your stitch count correct. So we're just going to keep picking up stitches across. As we go, we'll place a couple of markers based on the pattern instructions um, to mark off where we have the center front and center back little pattern details, the little texture details that are at the center front and center back, and also for the side seam. So I'm just going to keep going here and then show you what I have after I've picked up all of the stitches and placed the markers for those texture details and for the side seams and beginning of round. I am done with the hem. You can see it's nice and roughly here. Um, of course, this is a little bit more compressed than it will be on the finished garment. This is, you know, on a circular needle that's smaller than the circumference of the body to allow for comfortable knitting. Um, I have placed my stitch markers for my texture details, but it's mostly going to be stockinette in the round. Um, for the most part uh, throughout the main part of the body before getting into the upper body where it's worked flat. Um, but yeah, you can see the um, little detail, the slip stitch detail along that edge there, just creating a nice, really clean line um, along that edge. And yeah, sharing a little project update today. It is Thursday the 22nd and I have made quite a lot of progress. Um, honestly, I feel like this is the fastest I've knitted something in ages. Um, so this is where I'm at right now. Um, I have the hem done. I have a little bit of the body. Um, and I'll flip this to the other side. So you can see I have some progress keepers in here. And each of these progress keepers is marking off how much I've gotten done in a day. So um, each of these is probably about like two hours of knitting time in the evenings and like some other little little snippets of time here and there. Um, but yeah, I have a, a couple of inches of body and I um, actually haven't measured to see how much more um, length I need to make before starting the underarm shaping, but definitely really ple pleased with how fast this is going. Um, yeah, I started this less than a week ago and like 
it already kind of looks <laughs> looks a little bit like a sweater not like obviously does not have an upper body does not have sleeves but um getting to the point where it's like yes i've made a lot of progress here so we'll see how fast i can keep going um maybe i'll be able to get to that underarm shaping like by the end of the weekend and that is honestly crazy to me like thinking that i might knit a sweater in like a month for context um the sweater that i'm wearing right here this lovely cardigan it's um dk weight i knit this last year um and it took me like a solid like five months to knit the sweater um granted i did just have a uh, newborn I started it my daughter was born in December I started the sweater in January and then I finished it in like early June um, so yeah like five months of knitting and a lot of my projects have kind of been going along at that sort of pace um, so this feels like something very exciting and fast and I'm like really proud of myself for you know just diving in and like hardcore knitting um, and like not getting distracted by other things or, you know, I like do have pattern writing and stuff to work on, but um, definitely focusing on the knitting right now, which feels honestly really, really good. All right, enough of a check-in. Uh, I have work, work to do in just a little bit for my uh, for my day job. We'll be starting here in just a couple minutes. Um, so yeah, I'll check in again a uh, couple more after a couple more days of knitting. See how far I get, and yeah, I am coming in with another update today. It is Sunday, and I have made it mostly through the body here. I still have a little bit of the underarm shaping. You can kind of see here where I've started. I've started to do a little bit of increasing to make the body width a little bit wider here, but getting close to done, I'll be dividing for the front and back. Um, I'm sure sometime today, since I think I have maybe two more increase rounds. Um, before I do that divide and yeah so this is definitely going super fast and I'll show you a little bit of um, how that shaping works at the underarm it's super simple um, but I'll share that here so I am here at the underarm I have a little marker to mark off my side seam and you can kind of see where those increases are happening here along uh, it's like two stitches in from the underarm placement so I'll show you what I'm doing here I'll just get to that underarm point slip the marker work two stitches and then just work a make one increase and knit that and that just creates that little increased stitch and keep going across the row so again super simple and um, those increases are placed at each side of the underarm on obviously on both sides since you have two arms um, but yeah that just creates a little bit of shaping and um, increases the shoulder width so that it is a little bit uh, wider than what you would have otherwise hello it is friday it is two weeks since i cast on my long sleeve plinth tea project Apologies in advance for my voice. Uh, we have the daycare illness du jour um, at my house right now. Definitely still have been making some progress though, um, especially since the last time that I shared with you guys. So I'll show where I am now. I have completed the whole front. Um, you can see the neckline here, um, the lower body, and I am now on the back body but yes I am in my last skein um, I think I have around 80 80 ish grams left so definitely starting to um, cut it close on the yardage um, I'm almost guaranteed to run out of yarn um, at least using the yarn that I have so uh, I'm gonna finish the back and then see how much yarn I have left. Um, look at my yardage calculations from the pattern and see like, 
okay, how much of the sleeves would I potentially be um, using in a either new version of this yarn if I do opt to, you know, purchase a new skein of the existing yarn or just like kind of stripe in some yarns that I have that are kind of vaguely similar um, at the lower part of the sleeves. So I'm gonna wait to make that decision to see like exactly how much I have left. If I'm gonna need to like make half of a sleeve in different yarn, I'm absolutely just gonna purchase another skein. Uh, but just gonna hold off doing that for the time being. And yeah, I'm excited to have a weekend ahead, hoping that uh, both me and my daughter will be continuing to feel better um, and get in some good quality knitting time. I definitely will be finishing up the back here shortly. Um, I think I have, mm, I don't know, just a few few more rows before I begin the short row shoulder shaping. Then I'll join the shoulders, work the neckband trim, even though it technically doesn't call for doing that until the end of the pattern. I'm just going to go ahead and do it so it's like in the same yarn that I already have on the off chance that, and by off chance I mean the very likely chance that um, any replacement skein uh, that I order now, if I do, um, if I do order a new skein of yarn, it's it's gonna be a different color. Um, so gonna do that neckband in the most similar yarn that I have, um, and then start working on the sleeves. I will divide the remaining yarn that I have in two, um, just again in case of a uh, color differential between. Um, needing to purchase a new skein or whether I'm, you know, striping an existing yarn just to have that visual be equal from side to side. Um, but not at the point where I will be splitting that ball yet. So yeah, yeah, till the next update. Today is Monday, March 4th. I can't believe it's already March. Um, and I have another project update. So I have gotten quite far here. I have knitted the full upper body, joined the shoulders, and started on one sleeve. As I suspected previously, I'm absolutely going to run out of yarn for those sleeves. Um, I had about uh, 68 grams left um, after completing the upper body, and um, I did not actually do a calculation to see how much of the sleeve that I'm going to be able to knit. But the main reason why I haven't done that yet is because I think I am actually going to rip a lot of this back. So the upper body is knit flat and um, my row gauge especially changed pretty significantly uh, between knitting in the round and knitting flat. I did not have this issue on my first sample. Um, my first sample is... Uh, it's, it's a different yarn, um, but it's a very consistent row gauge between the stock knit in the round and the knit flat section. And when I tried it on, I realized that that extra length, essentially, because as I said, it's um, more about my row gauge than my stitch gauge being off. But my stitch gauge, I think, is also a little off. Um, the armhole is like pretty low and it's also just like causing the entire garment to be longer than it should be and the area where it's longer is like all in this like upper yoke section so I'm gonna try this on and show you guys what I'm talking about and compare it to the other um the other sample and yeah, so we're probably going to be ripping back all of this progress all the way back down to mm, here-ish. So that'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, yeah, six-ish days of knitting progress, which like honestly isn't too bad. I am kind of disappointed that I'm going to have to rip back, but... I do want the fit to be equivalent between my short sleeve sample and my long sleeve sample. Um, I think the pattern photos should, you know, reflect what you're supposed to get. I'll try this on and then I'm gonna start ripping back, which is, as I said, very sad, but I will deal with it. And I'm sure I'm gonna be a lot happier with the finished result after re-knitting um, that upper body 
and having it actually be the right gauge. Okay, so I have my sample on here, and I mean, honestly, like, it still looks cute. I like the way overall that it looks. Um, you can see here that the sleeve is kind of like a little bit slimmer than the armhole. You're kind of getting a little bunching here. That would definitely ease up in blocking, but you can see that this opening is way, way longer than what we're seeing over here because my gauge is actually on for knitting and around on that sleeve. So we're just kind of getting a bit of an imbalance and all of this extra fabric here, like this technically should be like about three quarters of an inch shorter, should be sitting about up here. And all of this length is happening in this upper body section. Um, I like aligned the, um, I aligned the bodies of both samples and all the lower body matches. It's just literally in this upper section where things are, things are different. So, um, yeah, I'm going to put a pin in my pants, um, where this, this hem is heading. And then I'm going to try on the short sleeve sample and you'll be able to see the difference. So let's, let's get that pin in. It's about like, I think it's about here-ish. Yeah, all right, yeah, that's good. So have that pin in, um, you can kind of see the fit. As I said, like, it is cute, I like it. It's just like not quite matching short sleeve and I want them to match since, you know, it's a pattern sample. All right, on to the short sleeve. All right, here is the short sleeve sample. As you can see, it's a lot closer fitting at the arms. Um, I mean, part of that is because having this garter trim at the side, it kind of acts like ribbing and snugs up a little bit along those armholes. So it will be a little slimmer at that outer edge compared to just a stockinette seam. But again, if you look at where this pin is on my pants, it's like, oh, it just dropped off, but it was about like two fingers, maybe, about, like about three quarters of an inch. Um, lower than where the sample is. This one just sits at a slightly nicer spot with that seam. Well, it's not a seam, kind of a seam. This sideways stitch detail here um, just sits at a really cute spot. The, you know, just yoke is sitting better on my body. It just doesn't need to be quite so deep through that upper section. So that is why I'm gonna rip back. I want both samples to have the same fit. So um, yeah, gonna rip back and re-knit that upper body section that's knit flat on size three needles instead of size four needles for the long sleeve sample. I didn't have to do that for this one. This one was totally fine as is. Gauge was completely the same um, regardless of working in the round or working flat. So, so it goes with knitting. Sometimes you gotta rip out. Hello, it is Friday again, and I am now three weeks into this project. Um, I spent a good chunk of this week uh, very under the weather, but I uh, still definitely got some knitting done. And I am almost back to where I was the last time I uh, checked in with you guys. So I um, had made the decision to re-knit the upper body um, and I have completely done that. I just finished the uh, I-cord neckband this morning and uh, I tried this on a little bit ago and I'm very, very glad that I made the decision to re-knit that upper body. Um, the fit is a lot more similar now between the short sleeve version and the long sleeve version. And I think it'll get even more similar once I start adding the sleeves onto this. So I'll just do a quick try on to show you guys um, the fit of this one. And again, compare it back to the short sleeve to show the difference that it made um, in re-knitting this upper section. So um, I'm glad to be heading into the weekend starting to work on the sleeves and um, I will be making the final decision on whether to actually order yarn for uh, being able to finish those sleeves or, um, you know, making do with the little bits of whatever that I have that kind of match, but honestly don't really match. Um, so I'm probably gonna end up ordering some yarn. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try this on and uh, get ready. 
get going on some sleeves here. <laughs> so here we are. I have the body back on um, and this is just hitting at a much nicer spot than, um, than it was before when the upper body was just like honestly just too deep. There's still definitely some room in that armhole. It'll tighten up as I add the sleeve on armholes, especially in stockinette, always get a little bit stretched out before you add any kind of like sleeve or trim onto them. So I'm just gonna pin where this is hitting again so that you can see how it compares to the short sleeve when I try that on. I'll see if I can get a little bit closer here. You can kind of see where that's hitting. All right, short sleeve version is on and you can see here the length is pretty much right at the exact same spot on this short sleeve version as it was with the long sleeve. So we're definitely in a much better spot than I was before re-knitting that upper body. Again, as I said, once I get the sleeves on the long sleeve version, we're gonna be in a much better place. Of course, things will probably change a little bit after I block it, um, but I'm just really, really happy with the body length right now um, being pretty equivalent between the two, despite being you know, different yarns that act slightly differently when knit up. So yeah, short sleeve version, looking in line with my long sleeve version, finally. I've officially started making sleeve progress and I have decided to go ahead and order another skein of the same yarn, um, same colorway. Again, something that's dyed 10 plus years later is not going to be an exact match, but it'll be closer than anything I have. Um, so that will be arriving at some point. I literally just placed the order like 10 minutes ago. So, um, Hopefully sometime later this week, I'll have that in hand and I'll be able to finish up the sleeves. In the meantime, I will be working on, um, you know, getting as far as I can on the sleeves. Um, also, somewhere along the way, I completely forgot that I was sharing like little steps of how to actually make this sweater and it turned into more of like project updates and how things are going and how I'm going to run out of yarn and how I need to re-knit the upper body. Um, obviously I can't go back and like uh, re-re-knit this for a third time. I mean I could but I'm not going to. Um, but I will uh, try to do some little technique um, snippets here on a swatch or something like that to show some of the areas that I have already knit um, but did not actively show any uh, kind of how-to steps along the way. In the meantime, gonna keep knitting those sleeves and uh, work on getting the sweater closer to finished. All right, here we are at the neckline. So when you begin working the neckline shaping, you'll work across the row, bind off some stitches at the center front neck, work to the end of the row and a wrong side row, and then begin working those decreases along the neckline edge and work the rest of this upper front. Uh, this is the wearer's right front. And something to note while you're working the, this shaping here, um, you will need to start your shoulder shaping before these neckline decreases are complete. So once you reach the specified measurement for that armhole length, it's about here, there are a couple you can kind of see there are a couple of decreases left to do when the shoulder shaping started. You will work the decrease along the neckline edge, work to the point where you need to do the short row wrap and turn, work back, work the decrease at the neckline edge, and you're just kind of adding two sets of instructions together, working one at one edge of the work and the other at the other edge of the work. And then just kind of working across, continuing the short row, short row shoulder shaping um, until you reach that top edge. Work across to pick up all of your wraps and then put that on hold and then start working the other side here. So I found my swatch. Um, this is like my design 
idea swatch rather than my gauge swatch. Um, so I was going to show some of the um, neckline shaping here and then um, I can also use this to demonstrate the short row shoulder shaping as well. So as I mentioned when beginning the neckline shaping you have to bind off stitches in the middle of the row so you're just going to work a standard bind off over those stitches for the specified number it'll tell you exactly where in the pattern to begin binding off and then you'll work to the end of the row after binding off your stitches work a wrong side row and then begin working those neckline decreases so i'm going to get to the point where i am whoop, there goes a stitch um, where i'm ready to work the first neckline decrease I have completed my bind off here and my wrong side row and I'm ready to work my decrease row. I work a couple of double decrease rounds first and that just creates a smoother edge so you go from your horizontal bind off to a slightly um, less steep double decrease so it's like a little a little angled but not as you know not quite as angled as you would be um, for a single decrease so you just kind of get a nice gentle curve along that neckline edge so i like to work decreases that point towards the direction of the opening and that's honestly just a personal preference you can choose to change the direction of the decrease if you'd like so here since i want the decrease to be uh, right leaning pointing towards the neckline edge I'm going to work a knit three together here and this is of course you know kind of fiddly but I'm going to work that double decrease and then work to the end of the row now in the pattern some uh, sizes will have additional double decreases um, and then work and then all sizes will continue to work single decreases after that point so i'm just going to work this return row and then show the single decrease here in a second okay i have worked that return row and i'm ready to continue working and again i'm going to knit those first two stitches and the reason i'm knitting two stitches is so i have a selvage stitch and then i have a um, plain knit stitch here and then I have those shaping um, kind of tick marks that point in towards the um, the neckline edge and again I'll continue across here and there we go you can kind of see that gentle shaping of that neckline edge there I've ripped back so we're now again back at that uh, neckline bind off edge we're just pretending that we're at the point where the measurement along the armhole edge is the place where I need to begin the short row shoulder shaping and I've knit those first two stitches of the row so I would work the decrease let's see if I can actually do that here and then knit toward until I reach the number of stitches that the pattern calls for before the end of the row and then I'm going to execute a wrap and turn and then turn my work and continue to work my my short row over here all right now I'm back here at the beginning of the row and I can work a decrease if I still need to, if there are still decreases left to do. And then you'll notice in this pattern, the instructions refer to the gap left by the wrap as opposed to the wrap stitch. I just find this gap to be an easier anchor point to visually see when I'm working. Sometimes it's hard to see the wrap, especially depending on the kind of yarn you're using. So I refer to the gap. So if you're going to be working, say, till four stitches before the gap, you're going to want to see the gap here. And then one, two, three, four stitches. So I'm going to work to four stitches before the gap. Now I have four stitches still on my left needle. Then I'll execute that wrap and turn and turn my work for that short row. And then you just continue working your short, short rows 
as the pattern calls for. Um, again, referencing that gap left by the wrap and turn as you're working across the row on your after your final short row, you'll be able to just knit across the row, picking up wraps as you reach them. So you can see the wrap here. We'll just pick that up and knit it together with a stitch. You want to make sure the wrap ends up behind this, uh, the plain knit stitch. And then once you have all of those short rows done, you will just be able to break your yarn and place these stitches on hold. And then you'll come back and begin working shaping on the other side. I've gotten about as far as I can before I will start alternating skeins into the next one. Once I receive that skein in the mail, about uh, five grams of yarn left here. You can see I have about a half length sleeve. It's just like just at slash past the crease of my elbow here. So theoretically, I could get about a three quarter ish length sleeve. So if I decide that the skeins are like really wildly different in color and it's like not gonna work, um, I could end this sweater with three quarter length sleeves. I do, I would prefer the full, um, full long sleeve length, but worst case, I can always end it a little bit early and do just like an I-cord um, edge at the sleeve opening. But since I am ready to well, start alternating skeins into a skein that I don't even have yet. I'm going to start working on the other sleeve. So since I'm going to be picking up stitches on this side here, so I can kind of work on something while I'm waiting on that yarn to arrive, I can do a quick little demo of that. Here we are at the other armhole ready to pick up stitches and I'm going to be starting to pick up stitches at the bottom edge of the armhole. So by our underarm shaping here and that's just so that pickup point remains pretty inconspicuous at the edge. All right I have my yarn and my needle and we are going to start picking up stitches as I said at the underarm point and we're going to be placing the needle one stitch in so we're going to be keeping a full one stitch selvage along the entire um, along the entire edge as we're picking up stitches so that you maintain a clean look. And we'll bring this up a little bit closer to the camera here. So picking up one stitch and then another. And the pickup rate along the armhole edge is about two stitches for every three rows. So we're gonna skip this next stitch space here and go into the following one instead and pick up two more stitches. And then we're going to skip the next space and go into the following one. So one, two, skip the third, one, two, skip the third. And you may have to do a couple of places where you just pick up one stitch and then skip the next stitch as opposed to picking up two directly next to each other. It um, depends on how many rows exactly you've worked along that edge. One thing to note is if you do want to have a slightly wider uh, bicep than the pattern calls for, you can always pick up at a slightly higher rate than the pattern calls for um, and still have plenty of room for those stitches to ease and nestle in to that armhole edge. Two stitches for every three rows is not like, you know, it's like a pretty even rate based on the gauge. So if you added, you know, another stitch here and there to get a total of a half inch or maybe even up to an inch more across the total circumference, you'd probably be fine getting that extra room in just by picking up a few extra stitches. So we're just gonna pick up all the way around and um, start going on that armhole. All right, I've picked up all of my stitches and I'm ready to begin working in the round. You can see that pickup edge, there's a full stitch all the way along the edge. There's not any place where the pickup kind of ends up eating a half of that stitch. So just be careful to use that full stitch width as you pick up stitches along the edge to make sure it maintains a nice, tidy and clean look. 
I came home from the office today to an unexpected surprise. The yarn that I ordered on Saturday, literally two days ago, uh, is already here. So um, I guess it's the moment of truth and we're gonna open this and see if it is a good or not so good um, match to the yarn that I had purchased a literal decade ago. Um, and we'll see how it goes. All right, here is the here is the new skein of yarn and here is here is my project. So looking at it, the new yarn is a little bit it's a little bit I would say like purplier um, but overall like similar similar ballpark. So I definitely think that, you know, striping this at the edge of the sleeves is going to be, you know, I'm sure noticeable, but not too crazy. Um, I think the older yarn has a lot more rust in it um, than the new yarn. The new yarn is a little bit more charcoal, a little bit more blue. Um, as I said, kind of has that little, little bit of a purple cast. The old yarn, definitely um, a little warmer, but like honestly for being yarns that were made 10 years apart, I'm not disappointed at all um, with the results. And honestly, this is like a lot more of a semi-solid color and this is a little bit more variegated. This is still a really nice colorway. I think it's really pretty and um and yeah so new yarn and we're gonna be able to finish these sleeves way sooner than i expected i mean i was expecting to get the yarn sometime this week and it's not like i was gonna be knitting the sleeves up in you know lightning pace i only have so much <laughs> so much time to to knit anyway um but yeah excited to have this and be able to continue on with my project with a much better match than anything that I have just kind of floating around in my stash um, with like little bits of leftover yarns that are completely different yarn bases and dyers and all of that stuff. So um, yeah, excited to be able to finish this up. I have a few minutes before work gets started today and have a finished sweater. Um, I finished this yesterday. Uh, today is Thursday the 14th. So I knit the sweater in slightly less than four weeks, which is like a mind blowing pace for me, um, especially in recent years. I don't think I've knit a sweater this fast since like college when I had loads of free time as a college student. Um, but I will try this on and um, show the finished fit. You can see, um, you can kind of see where the color gets a little bit darker at the end of the sleeves where I added in the new skein of yarn that I ordered um, that, you know, was dyed like 10 years after the rest of the yarn was dyed. Um, but I still think it's like definitely in the same like family, in the same ballpark. So I don't think it really um, detra detracts from the sweater in any measurable way. I think it's still super pretty. So um, yeah, I'll give this a quick try on and um, share the finished fit before I, well, I mean, it's not exactly the finished fit because still got to block it, all of that jazz. But um, yeah, I got it done. Release day is next, shoot, I think um, next Friday. Um, so I still have to get photos of this sample. I actually haven't even taken photos of the first sample um, because it's been like winter and there's been barely any light and I have a small child and <laughs> I've gotten sick. So there have been so many things going on. I haven't gotten my official pattern photos yet for either the short sleeve or the long sleeve. Well, of course not the long sleeve because I literally just finished it, um, but haven't gotten photos for the short sleeve yet. So I have a bit of work ahead of me before pattern release next Friday, but all of the knitting is done and that is super exciting. Here is the 
finished sweater. I am super happy with the fit. Um, it is really cute. I'm really glad that I re-knit that upper body. It's hitting at the perfect length. The armhole area and upper yoke area is feeling really good at this point. Obviously the fit is going to change slightly once I block it, but this should be a pretty good representation of what it'll look like. Um, I did knit the sleeves a little bit shorter than sometimes I typically do. Um, I knit it so that it hits like just at that wrist bone. Um, it'll probably lengthen slightly after blocking, um, but you can knit the sleeves as long as you want um, because, you know, it's knit from this like armhole down so you can knit as long or as short as you want. Um, I am going to include an alternate sleeve finishing option. This is just a garter cuff here, um, but I think an I-cord edge would also be really cute. So I'm going to include measurement, um, like just an easy knit to measurement length for both the cuff and for the full sleeve length, just so you don't have to like do any math while, <laughs> while you're, um, while you're knitting it up. The, an I-cord edge would be more like a blouse top kind of feel, um, so either would be super cute. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited about this. I need to um, wash it, block it, and you know, weave in all of the ends. But again, really happy with how this turned out. I think it's super cute. I love this the slight flounce at the hem. I mean, that is like the whole point of this sweater is having like that little cute flounce detail. It's not over the top. It just kind of provides some nice ease and like a little, a little bit of a swing there. Um, so yeah, I will uh, provide another update once, once I get this blocked. All right. So, uh, till the next time with a blocking update. It is blocked, ends are woven in, and I just took photos this morning. Um, I probably should have, could have gotten photos earlier, um, but my parents were visiting from out of town this weekend. So uh, photos kind of got derailed for a few days um, since the sweater has been like done and blocked for a number of days now, um, but it is done. Um, and. As I said, it's Wednesday. Uh, pattern release is on Friday, so I was able to get everything all done and wrapped up um, before the pattern release. So I'll just uh, give a quick little um, peek at the final fit after uh, blocking, since you know things do change uh, slightly after uh, you know just a nice bath in the water. All right, here is the finished sweater. So overall, the fit is pretty similar to the short sleeve. Of course, you know, that's the goal to get the similar fit between both versions. Of course, even if you're meeting gauge, sometimes just due to different yarn constructions and, um, you know, just how the fabric ends up reacting on the body, you do end up with a slightly different fit um, using different yarns. But overall, I'm really pleased. Um, it'll be a really nice just spring, uh, spring top. Um, I love the just kind of easy fit around the lower body and, um, yeah, it'll be a great part of my wardrobe for, you know, earlier part of spring is of course, as it warms up, I'm probably not going to wear this one as much and we'll be wearing the, uh, the short sleeve version quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I love how it turned out. I, um, definitely am glad that I opted to, um, to purchase the additional yarn needed to complete the sleeves in a, you know, similar enough color. I don't even think that you can really like notice it a ton. It does appear a bit darker here at the cuffs, but it still seems like the same, you know, it's like in the same family. If you're interested in knitting up your own plinth tee, the pattern is available now as you're watching this video. It's on both Ravelry and Payhip, so you can choose where you'd like to shop. I've linked both of those below in the description box. And I did wanna note that on the pattern page, uh, there is a full schematic available to view, so you can see all of the garment specs to make sure that you know it's going to be a good fit for you even before you purchase the pattern. So be sure to check that out.
Thank you for following along as I feverishly knit up this sweater over the last couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the construction steps along the way and just the process of knitting up a project start to finish um, over the last few weeks. If you'd like to see similar videos, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.